I, bro. I'm in week eight, bro, and I'm still. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new, thank you for subscribing. If you aren't new, thank you for continuing to watch. Today, I told you guys that I will come back for a part two for my um, 10 week update on my surgery. Um, if you have been following me, then you know that I had a BBL slash LIFO 360 on November 9th of last year. And basically, I am explaining what I went through each week so that you may be aware of the things that you could possibly go through during those weeks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Part one is of weeks one through five. So today I'm going to be starting at week six and the things that you could possibly go through from week six to week 10 because I am 10 weeks post-op. So I will give you those last five things um, so that you can be aware of what you would possibly go through within weeks one through 10. So we starting at week six. In week six, I dealt with itching, y'all. The itching. It's, it's the itching for me. Like, y'all don't do not understand. The itching is horrible. And don't take itching the wrong way. The reason that you are itching is because you are healing. So know that because your itching is a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. But the feeling of itching is not it is so bad and something that you could do in order to get the itching not to be so bad make sure that you get some benadryl cream or benadryl pills i had the benadryl pills but to be honest i feel like you should get both i should have got both the pills help but I feel like both would be more beneficial for you. So definitely get both because the itching is, is just too much. It was too much for me. Really too much for me. So yeah, definitely get those two products. And that would definitely help you with that healing process because baby... Like, is bad. But in week seven is when I was more likely to be able to lay on my sides. Some people may be lay, able to lay on their sides a little bit earlier. But for me, I was able to truly lay on my sides week seven. And how I got to that point was I would lay on two pillows like, I would lay on two pillows, straight across two pillows, and I would kind of lean over a little bit on each side. Therefore, I wasn't putting that much pressure on my hips. And the more that I did that on each side every night, the more my, um, my hips and stuff softened. So, it made it easier to be able to lay on my sides in week seven. So, that's what I was able to do in that week. Week eight was my birthday weekend so you already know i was not going out the house in no faha period i was slayed to the max i'm gonna put the picture up here for you so you guys can see how slayed i was for my birthday weekend you think i'm about to wear a faha i'm not i didn't too cute for that. I was slayed to the gods, like for real. But no, I yeah, I didn't go out in a faha. That was really my first time going out without my faha, and it wasn't that bad. Um, I did swell a lot, but you couldn't tell because I had on black. So if you're gonna go out in your faha, make sure that you wear something that 
will be able to hide the swelliness of your body because I was swollen to the max. It did kind of feel a little uncomfortable at first because you know, you've been compressed for so many weeks and then you try to be without your faha and it's just like, it's still a little weird. But by the end of the night, I got used to it kind of. Um, when I got back home, I did automatically go back into my faha because, no, it, no, no. Mm -mm. It was it just was weird for me and I'm just used to feeling compressed and that swelling feeling was not it so if you're gonna go without it it's okay but just don't stay out of it and during this week as well I was still itching um I was more so itching in my on my butt like in week seven and prior to that a little bit I was do like I had more itching in my lower back um because that part of my back like the lower part of my back is still s kind of swollen and I have like this burning sensation in that part of my back as well so I'm hoping that means that I'm healing in that area but in week eight my butt is soft but is softening up a little bit more. And I feel like that's where the itching in my butt came from. Only because I am healing more and more in that area because my butt has not fully gotten soft where I want it to be. Like I'm ready for the jiggle. I'm ready for the jiggle. I'm ready to walk down the street and my butt just be going everywhere. But I haven't got to that point yet and I'm being patient. It's a little hard because I'm like, all right, bro. I'm at week eight, bro, and I'm still kind of, eh. I just still have little, like, hard spots here and there. But they, they, they healing. They, they are definitely healing, you know. But I just need to be patient and give it some time and realize that this thing just no little two-minute surgery. And I'm going to heal in two seconds. I just got to relax and realize my time going to come, period. This also is the week that I tried on jeans. Now, mind you, I have a shelf type butt. So the way that jeans fit on me, it had, like, I have to buy my jeans big enough to fit my butt, which means that because my waist is smaller, my waist don't fit in the jeans. So I had this big gap in the back of my pants. And I'm like, I don't like this. Like, I don't like that. So I'm just like, you know what? They look cute on my butt or whatever, but I think I'm about to stick to tights because I've always been a tights type of girl. Like all I wear is leggings. I wear leggings every day. I'm that girl that owns 40 pair of leggings. All I wear in the winter time is leggings, a hoodie, and some Ugg boots. That's it. That's all I wear. That's my wardrobe for the winter time. So I'm like, okay, now I can wear some cute jeans, but finna be sitting. No, I don't like the way it looks. Like I have this big gap in my pants and I'm like, I don't know if I can get used to that. I mean, people telling me they that's that's a good problem to have, but I'm like, I'm not used to this. I'm not, but I would rather have that in the back than have a little pouch of fat in the front. So I'm not gonna complain because I'm snatched. Period. And week nine is the week that I felt like I was the most swollen. It's like, well, I'm not going to say swollen. I'm going to say bloated. I don't know why, but, well, I'm going to say both. I'm going to say swollen and bloated. I just feel so big. So that's the week that um, I ended up buying my sweat belt, which actually helps sweat out some of the fluid um, in my body. And also, I use a, um, a massager. 
and those two help me so much if in week nine you're dealing with a whole bunch of swelling please get you a sweat belt that's gonna help you sweat and get the handheld massager because that helped me tremendously like that helped me a lot because during this week i was finding like hard spots in my stomach and the handheld massager automatically got rid of those heart spots so if you feel like you have heart spots in this week definitely try to go find you a, a handheld massager um i will post that in the description below so that you guys can see the one that i order off of amazon it's like a deep tissue massage type of massager so it definitely will help you if you have those spots even my stomach was still so sore and i'm like maybe i'm not getting my massage the way that they supposed to be done because my stomach was still so tender and after i used my handheld massager for a week my stomach isn't tender anymore at all like i was to the point where i couldn't even really wash on my belly hard because it was still so sore but after a week of using my handheld massager my stomach isn't sore anymore at all and i still had like numbness in my back that's almost gone so definitely definitely get you a handheld massager because that definitely worked for me and this week week 10 what I've dealt with so far is I still swell, but the swelling has stopped a lot. Like, soon as I take my um, compression or whatever type of compression I have on, whether it's the Faha or the um, sweat belt, I do not immediately swell anymore. It literally takes me about three to four hours to even swell a little bit like so i realized and this week is the week that you're most likely to stop swelling as bad as you were swelling before so that's definitely a good thing also because of the sweat bill i lost you know, about an inch and a half in my waist and i've only wore that for a good two weeks um so i felt like that's definitely helping me cinch my waist because I heard that the Faha doesn't really help you get a smaller waist. It's basically just helping you with your compression. Um, but if you get the sweat belt, it's actually helping with your compression and your waist. So you definitely want to try it. We are looking to get that hourglass shape. And although our doctor gives us an hourglass shape, we always want it to be a little bit more enhanced. So um, if you're looking to enhance your figure a little bit more, you can definitely get the waist snatcher and be snatched to the gods. Period. Also this week is the week that I'm about to start working out and eating right because you don't want to get surgery and then mess up your results by not eating the way that you're supposed to eat not exercise and most people don't want to exercise because they feel like they're going to lose their butt um but mind you that when you work out if your butt gets smaller in any way it's not going to be a dramatic type of decrease so when you lose weight in your butt, mind you that you're going to lose weight in your waist as well. So your butt is going to always be larger than your waist. So you're always going to be proportionate, if that makes sense. I know a lot of people don't want to work out because they feel like they're going to lose their butt. Your body is always going to be proportionate because they took those fat cells out of your stomach and put them in your butt. So the more weight you lose in your butt will be the more weight you lose in your waist as well if that makes sense so i'm definitely going to start my weight loss journey um my waist is 33 inches and i'm trying to get it down to 29 inches and i want to be built like i am obsessed with muscular thighs in a snatched waist i'm gonna show y'all my 
motivation my idol that i actually look up to is miss Saudi the body i'm gonna post a video so you guys can see how she looks like i want to be shaped like this so bad so when i lose weight i actually want to gain muscle at the same time because i'm trying to be snatched to some of y'all like i'm be able to tell me nothing this summer I'm coming through. And you ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. Nothing. You ain't gonna be able to tell me a thing. Honey. If you ain't know me before. <laughs> if you ain't know me before. You ain't gonna know me now. Period. Because I'm coming through. I am definitely coming through y'all. But that is everything that I had for everything that I've went through during my surgery process from weeks one to week 10. So just make sure that you stay in your faha. Make sure that you're eating what you're supposed to eat. Make sure you're just doing everything that your daughter has insisted you to do. But yeah, that's basically everything that I had for you guys. If you have any more questions or concerns or anything that you may think that I have left out, you can put the questions in the comments below. I'll respond back to everybody. Um, because if you take the time to comment on my post, I'm going to take the time to respond. Yeah, that was everything that I had, you guys. But I want to thank you guys again for watching. And I will be back again for another video. Mm -hmm.